interrupt this program to bring you the following special report from ABC News. Assassins come in all shapes and sizes, but to most, when you think of a person attempting to kill the president, it's a man with a gun. That isn't always the case. As Sarah Jane Moore proved, sexism has no place when dealing with a deranged killer. My name is Matt Jarbo, and for your consideration, I present five facts about attempted assassin Sarah Jane Moore. Number five, she was married five times and had four kids. Sarah Jane Moore was just your average wife from West Virginia. Granted, her marriage life hadn't gone very well. She had five husbands and four kids. She spent time as a nursing school student and accountant and a woman's army corps recruit. Compared to other would-be assassins, her day-to-day -day life was fairly mundane. However, it was her obsession with Patricia Hearst that led her into the world of extreme politics, and that is where her life changed forever. Number 4. She was an FBI informant Though not all of the details of the situation are known, what we do know about Sarah Jane Moore, by her own admission, was that she had fallen into some radical left groups, radical to the point where the government was worried about them doing something drastic. Sarah Jane Moore was contacted by the FBI and became an informant for them. It's a bit strange of an irony that the person they contacted to spy on radical groups ended up becoming a would-be assassin herself. Number 3. She wanted to trigger a revolution 40 years ago today, Sarah Jane Moore aimed a gun at President Gerald Ford in San Francisco and fired a single bullet. For those who don't remember, Gerald R. Ford was not elected to the office of the presidency, but rather assumed the office in the wake of Richard Nixon's resignation. Many people had taken umbrage with this, assumingly forgetting how government works. Regardless, in more circles there was a lot of talk about assassinating Ford and starting an armed revolution afterwards. According to her, she wanted to be the one to do the deed because she was a nobody, and she didn't want major figures to be tied to it. Number 2. She was arrested the day before her assassination attempt. This part's actually kind of funny. The day before she attempted to kill President Ford, she was busted for having an illegal handgun. In her possession was an illegal 44 caliber revolver with 113 rounds of ammunition. The handgun was confiscated and she was released, but she was still determined to go through with the assassination attempt. So what did she do? She went and bought another gun. Now in modern times, this sort of thing would be difficult to pull off. However, in 1975, a woman who had just been arrested the day before could easily walk into a store and purchase another handgun with no questions asked. Number 1. She managed to escape prison once After the assassination attempt, Moore was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole. She was sent to the Alderson Federal Prison Camp in West Virginia, and she actually managed to escape. Now, she was caught pretty soon afterward and ended up serving 32 years of her sentence. When she was interviewed upon release, she says she was blinded by her radical political views. When asked about her escape attempt, she says if she would have gotten away, she would have stopped at a local bar just to get a drink and a hamburger. Well, everyone, that wraps up this episode of Forbidden Knowledge. My name is Matt Jarbo, and thank you so much for going with me on this journey through the life of an attempted assassin. And if you like this episode and want to see more, you can always thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below, and also check back next week for another exciting episode of Forbidden Knowledge.